Hi, today we will be talking about deploying your React app to Heroku using the GitLab CI CD pipeline and testing with WebDriver IO. By the end of this video, you would have learned how to create a React app, set up WebDriver IO test, set up a GitLab repository, create Heroku environments and add them to a GitLab CI pipeline. Connect Eruku and GitLab master branches, create a GitLab YML file, add GitLab variables, and see your pipeline run, deploying your React app to Eruku and testing it with WebDriver IO. Let's get started. <laughs> thing that we're going to do is to use the create react app to get a starter project going we are then going to open that project folder then we're going to say npm start and what this does it will start up the react project for you we are going to be using WebDriver IO, and if you go to my Test Automation University course, you will be able to follow along and see the commands that I am using. So we first use the command to install WebDriver IO, and then we install the WebDriver IO CLI. We are then setting up our WebDriver IO config file, and we select the options that we want. We are also going to install dependencies that we want. So we are going to install Chai, Chai WebDriver IO, as well as our local runner. Then we are going to go into our config file and we are going to alter our before test by adding the global Chai a search should and expect commands. We are then going to create a urls.js file and what this file will contain is a different urls that we are going to use depending on the environment. So we are going to have local, prod and QA. We are then going to set up our WebDriver IO config file to use those environments so that when you are running your test you can specify in the command line the environment that you want to run your test on. We are then going to change the base URL to process the environment and select the correct URL based on whether it is local, QA or prod. We are going to go into our package.json file and we're going to add the command wdio test. This allows us to use the WDIO config file to run our test. And so we're going to just write the part to it, which is in the node modules. We are then going to create a folder to hold our test. We're going to name it test. And we are then going to create the test file.
After we create our test file, we are going to go back into our config file and change the specs path. This part is looking for where you have your folder of test. And we only created a folder called test and we didn't have one called spec in it. So we needed to modify that. In our test, we're going to do something very simple. We're going to go to the React app and we're going to just check that an element is there and that it has some text that we are looking for. We are going to have our browser.url that is going to navigate to the application based on the environment that you have passed in. We're going to get the text of learn react and we find the element. So we're going to use the class. And for now, we are just going to print out the text that is returned. So if we run our test by specifying the environment variable and npm run wdio test, then we will see our test running. And if we look, we can see that it printed out learn react, which is the text that it got from that element. We are now going to change this to use assert, and we are going to assert that the text we are getting back is equal to learn react. And if we do that and run our test again, then it should pass. We are then going to create our GitLab project. And so we're going to name it React Web Driver IO GitLab CICD. And we are going to add a project description, make it public, and then create project. We are then going to clone this project using HTTPS. So we are going to copy that command and we are going to go into our command line and we are going to say git remote add origin and we are going to paste what we just copied. We are then going to commit what we just did. And then we are going to get pushed to origin master. We are then going to go to the Heroku Dev Center and we are going to check out how we get the Heroku command line interface. What this allows us to do is to log into Heroku from the command line and push what we have to Heroku. So you can click on Get Started with Node.js and follow the instructions that is there. Those are the same instructions that I followed to get started and to log into Eroku. Ensure that you have created an account as well. Now we are going to create the Heroku URL that is going to host our application. If you notice, we are using a build pack here. And what a build pack does, it transforms deployed code into a slug and that allows Heroku to execute it. It is composed of a set of scripts and depending on the programming language that you are using, these scripts will retrieve dependencies, generate assets, etc. Heroku supports Ruby, Python, Java, Node.js, Scala, and Go. And you can use different build packs. So we are using the Create React App build pack. 
and it is going to be used to compile or create a React app and it will be permanently set for future pushes of our application. So we are going to create a Julia QA and we are also going to create a production environment called Julia Test Prod. If we go to Eroku and refresh it, we should see those two environments that we just created. We are going to create a new pipeline and add those two environments in it. So we're going to name our pipeline and click create pipeline. The pipeline allows for a staging and a production. So I added Julia QA to staging and Julia test product to production. We are going to set up Git remotes for both Julia QA and Julia test prod. And if we go to Eroku right now and we open up, we will realize that it contains a default website. We want to put our website that we have created on these URLs. So we are going to push to our GitLab repository what we just changed and we're going to say git push Eroku master and what that does because we have linked Eroku and GitLab it's going to take what is on the master for GitLab and push it to the master for Eroku. So if we do that and then say Eroku open, it will open up Julia test prod. And we are going to do the same thing for Julia QA so that both Julia QA and Julia prod has the current application. The next thing that we're going to do is set up our GitLab CI CD configuration. We're going to create a GitLab YML file and we're going to have our node modules in cache so that we do not have to reinstall and save it each time. We're going to name our stages we have in it, deploy QA, test QA and deploy prod. In or in its stage, we are going to be using the node Docker image and we are going to say npm install and this will take all that we have and install it. In deploy QA we are going to use the docker image node again and we are going to have the script git push and if you realize here we are using two variables Eroku user and Eroku API key. You can set those in your GitLab project. And you're going to go to settings, CI CD, click on expand variables, and you're going to add those two variables. Eroku user is going to be Eroku, and the Eroku API key is in account settings, and you are going to copy your API key. Then, after we deploy QA to that environment where we specify URL, we are going to then test QA, and we're going to be using this Docker image. So, if you go to Docker Hub, and you search for the docker image try on you will find this and what it does it contains java node all the things that you want including selenium to run your test automation it allows you to run your web driver io test in your ci cd and we are going to put our script which is specifier environment and our command and then we're going to deploy to production using again the node image and we are going to do the same thing for the script so we are going to push our changes that we have made in our gitlab yml file and then we are going to go to our gitlab and we should see where our pipeline has started running. So if we go to CI CD pipelines, we should see where a new pipeline has started running. And you'll notice that we have all four stages there. So if we click on in it, we'll see a log of what is happening. 
and we'll see that this job was successful, we can then move on to the next job, which would be to deploy QA. Once this is successful, then it should move on to testing QA. If at any point in this process, one of these stages fails, then it will stop and anything after the failure will not be executed, which is why we are testing after we deploy to QA and we're testing on QA so that if anything is broken from our tests, then we won't deploy to production and break production as well. As we can see, this job succeeded, and if you look at our pipeline, it took 8 minutes 43 seconds. So if we go ahead and make some change to our application, we're going to just add a paragraph that says, this is an update to the web page, and we realize that it is on our local host. If we refresh our Eruka application, we'll see that the previous build that we did is there. So now we are going to save what we just did and commit that to our master file. Once we have done that, we will notice that it kickstarts a next build. And so once the build has passed, if we go to Julia QA and Julia test prod, we will see that the updated code has been pushed to the environments. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. See you in the next one.